we sort of knew it was coming, really, you know, with a lot of young players in. Um, to be fair, um, you know, we were, we wouldn't, okay, you could say Scotland just didn't turn up second half, but that by the by, you know, so we could well and probably should have beaten Scotland. Uh, we were also very, very close to beating England in Twickenham. Um, Ireland probably beat us well, well, second half in, in Dublin. And the French once they emptied the bench, so you know it, it's it's not all doom and gloom. But I I was the biggest disappointment probably was the way we played against Italy. I really thought um, you know we were good enough to beat Italy, although Italy have improved and are a very good side. You've seen that with Benetton and, and Zebra this year in the URC. But uh, that was probably the big the most disappointment game was was the Italy one because we 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 were poor. We played really really. Uh, until the sort of last sort of twenty minutes, and then we scored a couple of tries and another you know, five minutes, and who knows we could have won it. But uh, no, Italy deserved the win. So yeah, it's, it was been a disappointing, but um, probably the last result probably was the most disappointing. The way we played more than more so than the result. You know, the first thing you said there was it's been coming, and I think it was almost fitting in a way, and it wasn't the way George North would have wanted to finish his career, mm. of course. But that sort of last emblem of the golden Welsh era. Taolupe Falatau apart, although, you know, we don't know how much longer he'll be playing for. He's now retired and it really did feel like the curtain has come down on that era now. And obviously to finish with a wooden spoon is kind of for many a reflection of the, the phrase rock bottom keeps being used. Um, and Wales's trajectory over the Six Nations, like you say, their close games were towards the start. They're, you know, and then they faded against France and faded badly against Italy. So what do you make of the sort of, well, trajectory of the Six Nations being maybe a metaphor as well for, unfortunately, how the international game is shaping up there in general? Yeah, you know, as you said, um, you know, if, if you go back to sort of sort of probably 2000 and probably say 2003, I think, when we sort of in the World Cup, when Shane Williams came to prevalence and from that sort of time on, uh, particularly 2005 when he won the, the Grand Slam then, you know that sort of 15 20 years um under Ruddock, first of all and, and then under um and then under Gatlin's after then you know there were some they were top class world players in in that um and i think probably the, the best side of wales was probably around the 2011 12 yeah. maybe 13 um and and i still i still have no doubts a lot of kiwis may not agree with this but if, if wales would have gone to the final in 2011 we would have beaten new zealand because new zealand were they were under pressure in that final and probably shouldn't have won it. France were the better team that day, to be honest. So New Zealand were very, very lucky to win that. Um, referees, isn't it? And referees, Nigel. Hey, what can you do with them? Well, you, you can talk about referees, but then if you look at, you know, when, when Wales had, um, you know, hooky missed a penalty, half penny missed a penalty at the end, but but everybody still goes back to rightly or wrongly whether that yellow card counts. But obviously, it was a factor in the game, of course. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of, big names gone then, pretty much very sort of mirrors a bit of the 70s, isn't it? You know, during the sort of late 70s, 79 onwards, you know, then Wales became pretty average side for a while and then started until the rebuild came again decades later. But um, we haven't got those players in the regions at the moment. Um, you know, those big, top quality, world-class players are just not there. You've got the odd one or two, but you need 15, 20 of those today, particularly with the likes of of Italy have done, you know, Italy have got a they've got a good lot of youngsters, they've got a good academy system there, they've got a good numbers playing. Um and I if I'm like I could be wrong here, but I'm pretty sure that the guy who went over to Italy to set all that up was was the same guy that set up the Irish Academy with Ireland, who is now part of Joe Smith's coaching setup in, in Australia. So it'll be very interesting to see what he does in Australia in the next few years. So so yeah, that we, we haven't got that sort of writing wheels, I think. So we can they can point the finger at a lot of people at the top end of the game, but they've, they've got to really look at the structure here in Wales, you know, the, the academy structure and everything, which, which which hasn't been right for, for a long time. But, yeah, you know, the, it was a few years ago people were calling for Italy to be chucked out of the Six Nations. I know. <laughs> a lot of those Welsh people calling that, they're very quiet after this weekend, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> no, Nigel, the Welsh people are very emotional, you know, heart and sleeve, I'd say. Um, but you get all the sort of doomsters this weekend, I mean, people like you will know that this is not rock bottom. I mean, Wales have lost 96-13 away to South Africa. Mm. They've lost by 60 points away to Australia, and the team were fighting at the dinner afterwards. So this is this is not rock bottom, even as bad as it seems at the moment. So do you, one or two of you slightly elder citizens need to 
remind the younger generation that you know teams do regenerate. Yeah, you're, you're right. Um, you know, a lot of teams have gone through it. If you look at England, we're pretty, you know, pretty average. You know, after the World Cup 2003, then some sort of four, 2005, sort of five, probably after the Lions tour to New Zealand, England were pretty average for quite a few few years. Um, and then they sort of got back into it a bit. So yeah, you're, you're right. You know, there's been. I remember, you know, and I'm not that old. A lot of people older than me. I, I remember some really, really tougher times in 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 Welsh rugby, and um, you do need, you know, there are some there are some good quality players there, but they just they just need the time and the experience now. But obviously, at international level, it's it's very unforgiving, isn't it? You know, people don't give you that that time, but yeah. but you need it all. You know, all all the sort of great sides will come to a time where they where they need to to rebuild, and and that's where we are at at, at the moment. But I think it is there is. As I said, not so, not so much the result on the weekend. It is just the way we played. We were we were poor on the weekend for a long for a long period in 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 that game, and um, that's probably what was more disappointing than actually the, the result itself. Maybe you know, but um, yeah, it, it is a rebuilding process, and um, you know, hopefully you know, we can we can start to rebuild. As I said, you know, there was a couple of games in the Six Nations we were very unlucky not 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 to get a result. So, um, but that that luck faded away in the last two games. That's for sure.